Hi everyone. Thanks for visiting Guided by God, a channel that I was guided to create with the help of my 12 year old son. Um, I procrastinated on this so much because I was afraid of what people might think, might say, might do. But it was one day, it was overwhelming. It was a nudge from Holy Spirit. It was me feeling stressful, overwhelming, not believing in myself. And I thought, I came this far. I did all this work. This is not me. This is energies being thrown at me, being sent to me. This is evil whispering in my ears, yelling. I felt stressed. It was like almost like God was showing me what many of you are going through. And I mean, I believed it for a while. It's like people were sending it towards me to feel stuck. And thank you, Holy Spirit, sending me energies not to move forward because they weren't ready. Because what they were plotting and planning was not succeeding. They weren't ready. But that rainy, cold day, I heard, I got you this far. I removed you from that sofa from the same things you do every day. I called you and I chose you. You are ready. I'm telling you, you are ready. And you are pushing back your blessings and your life's purpose. And when I felt that and I heard that, I jumped up. And not only that, my son came to me and said, are you going to start that channel today? And I said, wow. I said, let's do this. You have to understand that when God calls you and you do all the work, I mean, there's nothing anyone can say that can take me away from this calling, can take me take me away from God and how he makes me feel. God completes me. He filled every crevice in my body, every hole that was empty. He mended my heart. He stitched it. He glued it. He did something to it that made it pump harder, that made it feel more. It was real, it wasn't an illusion, it wasn't made up, it wasn't something someone just said to make me feel a certain way. It was absolutely profound. It was, the love was heavy, but I felt light. And he gives you that type of love because you're healing. And at the same time you're healing, He's comforting you because it takes a lot of healing to let the spirit of God inside of you. And when he's inside you, there's no one that can ever harm you. They can't take away anything away from you. I want you to understand this. At first, I was reluctant 
but being casted out for so many years of my life, I said, wow, I felt wanted. Who does not want to feel wanted? And this is why God calls the ones that are broken and emotionally and physically abused. He wants us because he knows we're going to take heed to his calling once we are alone and isolated. That's how God wants you. When God says cut all ties, close the door, do not respond, do this, do it. It's for a reason. I was in a deep, deep sleep today, earlier on. I'm sorry, it is two, it was 2.48 a.m. as I was starting this segment. And something guided me to hear rejection is protection. Rejection is protection. I kept hearing that. Don't feel bad when someone ghosts you. That means when someone just leaves you without giving you a um, goodbye or a reason. That's what ghost is. And you have to understand we are at war with, we are at spiritual warfare with people that are narcissistic and I'm going to express that over and over again because this is what is in the world. It's selfish people that only thinks about themselves and they think they can just sneak back into your life when you're all done doing your work and you've established your life and you're ready to live it. They want to sneak back in and I'm going to give you the message that God wants me to give you. When you don't understand that rejection is protection and when you don't understand when God says cut all ties, close the door, you will reopen it, right? And you will not cut the ties with people. And you will keep letting these people come into your home Go around your energy, your children. They know where you work. They know your husband or your wife. They know your ins and your outs. They know your secrets. Some people do not have the best intentions for you. And this is why it is imperative that when you live your life, live your life. You don't need invitations of others in your business or in your life. And when you're healing, God shows you how to stand in your power, how to live your life, how do you don't need people as companion to go anywhere with you or do anything. Do we need friendship? Sure. Do we need it though? No, we want it. We don't need things in our lives. We just want it. But when you're not healed, you're going to need it. You're going to speak that way. You're going to say, I need you. I need this. I need that. No, you don't. People will concoct little stories in their head and they will try to say someone thinks they're perfect or they're bipolar, they will give, they will label you without having a psychology degree or a psychiatrist or a degree. They will say things knowing that within their own family and within their own circle and even themselves, they are all suffering from that. When you are born, you are born with everything that your parents have ever, ever done. Everything. 
It's repetitive. It's a pattern. It's a cycle. You cannot stop it. That's just the circle of life. What you've done is going to be repetitive. It's going to be a cycle. If you were abused physically and emotionally, you're going to do that to your kids. Or you're going to do it to someone else. It's repetitive. Sometimes it skips a generation and it goes to the other. No matter what, you can't escape it. I keep hearing rejection is protection again. And I'm hearing the Bible verse when Lot's wife was not supposed to turn around and she did. She was specifically told not to turn her back, like to, to see what was happening, and she did. What happened to her? It was death. And I'm gonna tell you why. You need to keep the doors closed. And many of you, it's too late. Last year, when I had social media and I was spiritually awakened, I was pushed into a spiritual awakening. I was on fire. My intuition was on fire. I had downloads of people, of places, everything. God revealed so much to me. And I was preaching on sexually transmitted diseases. And I didn't know that it wasn't right then and there. I didn't know that I was speaking of the future. I didn't know that I was stating things that were supposed to happen now. Many of you have found out and you've kept it a secret. Many of you are in mental institutions because of the mental illness, because of the things you were projecting onto someone else. If you believe in God, you must believe in Satan. If you believe that there are miracles of God, you need to believe that there are rituals in witchcraft that people are doing. Holy Spirit showed me Ones that they want individuals to lose their mind, lose money, lose love for their kids to be gay, for their kids to be pedophiles, for, pe for you, for individuals to find men and women that are pedophiles. I'm hearing the word jarring. Jarring meaning, I think, I think jarring is um, very scary, very scary information. I'm hearing scary information. I'm hearing ugly monsters. I'm hearing divine abusers. When God closes a door, meaning if it did not work out between you and a certain individual, it is a blessing. God does not allow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God does not allow two people that are meant to be to be apart. Yes, it does happen when people interfere. The two separate. Right? But there's no way, no way that the two will be separated for long. There will be a lot of destruction. I'm hearing men and women interfering with relationships. They seek to kill, destroy, and take. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, said steal. 
They come in to kill, destroy, and steal. All because you're happy and they're not. Vengeance and hate that lives within the heart is the most dangerous ever. I'm picking up on individuals that just want to knock at some people's door and just mace them. Mace their eyes out. I'm, I'm getting a picture of a gun. Someone just wants to shoot someone. We are uh, on the, at the time that we need to be vigil, to look over our shoulders. Because there are people that just want to do evil things. You walk by and they want to hurt you. I'm pleading with you. For whoever needs to hear this, stop forcing a situation. Stop forcing someone to be with you. You want someone to love you for you, and you want someone to stay with you because they want to. These relationships that are going on is forceful. It's competition. How can you compete? How can you compete with people that are not competing with you? How can you compete with something that's not for you? It's because you guys don't believe that there's something bigger than you. You all think that you are the God of your life, that you are the master. But little do you know that we are born with a purpose. We are all born with a purpose. God needs to tell you what that purpose is, but you need to be ready and willing holy spirit sent me so many messages on be beware of male energies that are not to be trusted and these are individuals that i couldn't believe i just couldn't believe but they're miserable. And I started crying because you, it blows your mind to think, how could you be this miserable to try to destroy someone's life? You have to be rotting inside. And then I heard ugly monster when I thought that. But at the same time, some of you are being called and sent signs to stop. All the visions, all the downloads that you're having in your sleep, those are warnings. And that's why I'm being told that you're sending other people to check up on individuals. Random checks. And I heard cut all ties. And God has closed the door on many of you. I'm hearing, please do not leave me. And this is so sad. Because I'm hearing right now, there's many of us that are going places and some of you cannot go. We all need to live in the present now. We need to live now. Many of you are trying to find things out for the future. You can't change the future. It's already written. You can't manipulate it. If you manipulate it, it will destroy. It's like stalking a woman or a man you've always wanted. And then you finally get married with her. You finally win him or her. But they're not your person. Within that marriage, something is going to break. Stop letting people come back into your life when you already have healed, you've done your inner work, and you now are healed and you have proven to yourself that you can move forward and you can love again. Many of the th times we think we he we've healed. In January, I thought it was okay. 
when I was being guided to go take this trip to, trip to Cape Verde, I went. I now know why. I knew two months ago why I was being sent on that trip. There was a couple of, no, a few reasons why I took that trip. First, it was to teach me that I was not fully healed, that I needed to learn a lesson and a test that I failed, but it was not horribly, but I failed it. I heard you turned it around. I failed it, but I turned it around. Second, it was to experience things that we were taking taking for granted and how living in Africa, people were rich and they didn't even know it. They didn't even know it. To wake up and hear good morning from strangers, to hear and see the ocean, the sun is so bright every day to experience the atmosphere, the air, everything so clean. It, it just leaves you glowing. It just makes you happy to wake up in that sunlight, to hear the roar of the ocean, to be able to just do about everything and anything without even a care in the world. But God also showed me there's a, an evil side to places like that to where many have to change. Many of the darkness needs to be brought out into the light is where children are taking advantage of older people there. Children are a commodity. Children are being pushed aside. And Overseas, it's more dangerous because things are not controlled like it is in, in the United States. It's hidden, but it's, it's found. We have FBI, and I'm hearing that while I was doing my studies, FBI is being called in to connect because there's a lot of children that have STDs and the database. They're finding that many young children have STDs. So they're connecting with West Africa. Little do some people know. God says, let it go. When things are not feeling good, looking good, when you can't see life goals, if you can't see things ahead, let it go. Stop forcing it. Stop treating people as possessions. They're not possessions. People are to love one another. They're to support and care. They're to encourage. Holy Spirit showing me some horrible relationships. Relationships based on money. And uh, once being one-sided where someone loves one person and the other person just wants money. I'm hearing fake um, proposals. I'm hearing partners cheating on each other's children not belonging to the other person, and they're I'm 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 hearing going to court fighting for child support where. They're winning all their money back because they were never the father. Here they are 
raising a child thinking it's theirs and it was never theirs. And coming to find out some of the men are sterile. They cannot have kids. And then all of a sudden, this woman comes up with three kids. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm seeing three and I'm seeing children. Rejection is protection. Peter 5.8 And I'm literally hearing the name Peter like a Peter exists. It says be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. And that is exactly what some of you all are doing. You want to devour someone just because they just don't want to be with you. Just because they lied to you. But you knew. You kept on promising this person. Let's do this. Let's go on a trip. I'm going to buy you this. Just for them to stay. You don't pay people to stay. They stay because they want to. They stay because they truly love you. Are you wanting to be with someone? Do you see them in your future? What are they going to do for you? What, are they going to care for you when you're sick? Are they going to bathe you? Are they going to feed you? Are they going to love you for you? Or is it vain love? Are they loving what you look like? What about when you don't look like that anymore then what then you're of age and you're stuck many of you have destroyed your life where you're gonna be alone for 10 years because of all the the malice that you've created you tried to create for someone else I'm even hearing some of you have caused deaths, which is sad. Because of so much of this darkness that you are creating and you're letting in. You're believing in false prophets. You're letting individuals misguide you. Stop trying to hide an individual from people. I'm going to tell you why. Someone that's for you will not stray. They will only see you. They will only see you. They will only be loyal to you. They will not stray. I will never forget when someone says, when you date someone, just keep him there. Just don't bring him up. No, I will definitely bring him around. Because if someone can just snatch him just like that, he is not for me. And he is not of God. I already know what he will do. If I was ever to stay with this person. There are times you ever been with someone and then when you've healed and you've stayed away for so long, then you're like, why were, why was I with that person? There's people that's doing this stuff. They are conjuring you to be with them. Your mind is foggy. You ever had foggy mind, like clouded mind? You, you have migraines. Your back hurts, your stomach hurts. You have blurred vision that you think you need glasses. That's all witchcraft being done to you. 
where you think you love someone, but it's just an illusion. And then God finally lifts the veil up because there's certain times where because curses and hexes and witchcraft does not last. It doesn't last for long. And when you wake up, you're like, what? Why? Why was I with that person? I would never. And all of a sudden when they can't control you and they, can, they can't deceive you and they, can, they cannot manipulate you, they start to throw you under the bus. They will slander your name. They will, they will lie to your family. Whenever they're throwing something at you and it's not happening, and you see why it's happening to them, it returns back to the sender. You have to be out of your mind to be attacking someone that God has called and was chosen. At first, you're called, but you, you have to do the work. Does it fall on individuals? Absolutely. But once that person has healed and has stepped into the power that God has given all of us, and you do not abuse it, I don't even use mine at all. I let God do everything for me. I sit back and I let God vindicate me. Many of you are leaning on your own understanding, thinking, and hating on people that choose to walk God's path. When you walk God's path, you cannot be around individuals. You cannot be around people. You have to, this is, it's like a job and it doesn't stop. It's a lifestyle. You've changed, but it no longer becomes a sacrifice. At first, you feel like you're sacrificing everything because you're so addicted to everything. You're addicted to people. You're addicted to food. You're addicted to this. You're addicted to that. Mm -mm. Now that I've healed, I tell God every day, wow, this is a blessing. This is amazing. It's not a sacrifice anymore. It becomes non-sacrificial. At first, yes, because you're not healed. So you think you need a man. You think you need sex. You think you need this. You... No, I can go a whole day without eating my favorite foods the cravings, everything stop. When you give yourself to God, drug, drug cravings stop, alcohol addiction stop, every ailment in your body stops, the headache stops, everything, your bones stop hurting. I'm going to tell you that witchcraft is 100% real, that curses and hexes is real. You fall all the time. You bang your head, especially if you're around a certain individual. Last year, I almost, I almost got into three car accidents, meaning there was three incidents while I was talking to a certain person or just walking, a car almost took my life three times, three times in 2017. I was falling, my face was breaking out, I was losing my hair. I was gaining this weight that I didn't understand where it was coming from. My doctors were saying my numbers were weird. It wasn't my adrenal glands were messed up and they did not know. There was no medical 
anything saying why this was happening to me. They were baffled. My mind was clouded. I was making decisions out of the blue. Like, I didn't know why I was making the decisions. This was my look for probably two to three years. I was like this. Like, why? What's going on? And the thing is, they even attack your own children where your children attack you at 100. And my oldest were attacking me. They were even sending it to my son that my son was getting hurt. This is why people need to believe that many individuals, their mouth drop when they found out that I was still breathing and I was still walking forward and I was not turning to drugs. I was not turning to the men that were promising me this and that for me to go stay with them for free and do this and that. God was appointing me to people that I knew, but I, I didn't see them for a long time. Old classmates that were helping me. Even, even one of them asked, why don't you want to be with me? I just didn't. I went through a harsh time. When I owned my own house, I was in two relationships, like three years apart. And I didn't know I was with narcissistic, narcissistic people. I just didn't know what the word was. I didn't know they existed. I didn't know people functioned in that way. This was my look. Like, what? Because I had people that I trusted and I loved all my life that was doing it to me. For a long time, I just didn't know. And I'm hearing right now, thank you, God. I'm hearing God's timing. Sometimes we have to go through the trials and the tribulations. I'm still standing because I didn't make the wrong decision. And I kept thinking God, kept on thinking that God. So many times when I was awake and like. And he's and, and, and I can hear God saying, give yourself more credit than that. Give yourself credit. And I'm like, I didn't understand it again. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this. And it's because I could have swayed any other way. I could have I I could have took any other person's false advice and I did not. I always in my heart knew that God existed. I just never called on him. Until that one day that I was shopping at Burlington and something just pushed me to let some bottled feelings out and I cried I was in a store and I was hiding in the towel rack and just letting it all out and God revealed to me who was doing it and where it was coming from and how long it was for so long it was car accidents after car accidents it was me falling. It was me cutting myself. So many times rolling downstairs where my godmother can tell you. She, she saw it with her own eyes how it just felt like I jumped up to play a trick, but it felt like somebody pushed me. It was from those that should have protected me and loved me all of my life and, went and did it to me since I was young. All because they have hate in their hearts. And God is saying they have an entity inside of them. 
that was created since childhood. But during healing, God explains to you, you wouldn't be here without any of that happening. You don't think about these things because you don't expect your own flesh and blood, your own people to betray you. They keep it hidden because that's how the devil likes it in the dark. And then they turn it on you and make you seem like you're crazy. Whenever you're going good in life, they'll tell someone this and this and that. Oh, they're getting help or this is what's going on. They never could, could set a good example or say something nice. They always have to mutilate who you are and I'm hearing the word mutilate because you're not happy with who you are and where you are in your life and what you have you're not grateful and there is a scripture and I'm hearing this now there is a scripture in the Bible where God burns with anger because of being not grateful and many of many of you need to go to Africa you will be changed you will know what being grateful is when you see children without anything there were some things that I was wanting so badly that was an American I couldn't get and you wouldn't believe what it was it was my it was a bar of soap and it was Dove. And when I finally found it in a store, that bar of soap was almost like $10. We need to be grateful. And I tell my son this all the time. There are children that do not have what you have and you need to be thankful for it. Don't ever be greedy These are things, they can be replaced, but you can never be replaced. It's like just letting your kids jump in the back seat without strapping them in. Our kids can't be replaced. You need to do the right thing. You need to make the right decision. Rejection is protection. I know who to let back into my life and I know who not to. God has closed the door because in time with time again, he says stop and you know that you need to stop and you will not stop. And my nose is itchy. There is many of you that have drug addictions, alcohol addictions, and food addictions, sex addictions, and people just see it as, oh, it's just a part of life. No, it is not. It is not just a part of life. It's a decision that you are just, are just making for yourself. And you're killing yourselves. And I'm hearing someone saying, we all die anyway. So does that mean that you need to commit suicide? Because it is suicide at the end of the day. Do not be like Lot's wife and turn around when God tells you do not turn around. It is not the end of your life if you do find out you have an STD. It's a, a, a lesson that you need to learn. Because some of you are intentionally being 
vindictive. And I'm hearing the word vindictive, conniving, deceptive. And you will step on anyone that tries to get in front of you, behind you, or beside you. You are you, at all costs. That's what I'm hearing. You will get just about anything that you want and you'll step on anyone to get it. And that's not how it's supposed to be. Love is free. Love is hugging your partner and saying, I'll see you later, honey. And don't have to worry about it. Love is not searching someone's phone, going through their private things. Do you want to be in a relationship where you need to do that? Because you're not healed, first of all. Are you not sure of the person that you are? I will never forget when, when I was in a relationship in 2013 when he said, you don't love me. And I said, why do you say that? Because you never call and check up on me. I'm not your mother. If you left and you're not here, there's, you, you left the house. And he stated, there is no, none like you. I'm not going into no relationship trying to be anyone's mother. I don't need to be disrespectful and go through anybody's phone unless they're giving me permission to go through their phone or they're showing me something. When you are doing that and you have a feeling that this individual is doing something, your partner is doing something, that means he is and she is doing that. She is cheating on you. Whenever it is your intuition, use your discernment. We have spirit guides that nudge us, that let us know. You ever hear that feeling? It's the truth. There was, I'm telling you, I used to pick up on stuff and say, are you this? Are you? I started tapping into my intuition subconsciously without knowing. And when you pick up on those type of people, they'll run from you because they're saying, uh-uh, this person's tapped in. They already, they'll find out. There's plenty that have come my way that have tried to plot and try to take, but they can't because they know that my intentions were real. I didn't want anything from anybody. All I wanted was to really love them and to receive it back. Did I? No. But at that time, I was settling. I didn't love myself. So how, if you don't love yourself, how would you know what to expect from someone? So you end up settling. If someone feels like they are a drug to you, you're obsessing and you're a possessive person. No one should feel like they're a drug. To you. I'm hearing many of you have woken up and said, why am I with this person? That's because you were conjured. That's what people are doing today. Not only today, back then, where you see people cheating on people openly. And you see the same person going back and forth, back and forth. If this is a relationship that two people are keep breaking up, going back, breaking up, going back, it's a dead relationship. It's a dead end. It needs to end. Everyone that steps into your life is an assignment. There's a reason for it. 
Stop hiding individuals. We all meet each other for a certain purpose. Our life is is a, it goes accordingly to who we meet, who crosses our paths. People that are invited into our lives and we see them or someone says, well, this person is this. Nothing happens by coincidence. We all see and meet each other for a reason in our lifetime. You could be meeting your husband, your friend, could be introducing you to an ex-boyfriend of hers and this is how you probably will meet your soulmate someone that god has for you that's why you need to believe that you cannot be possessive or obsessed with someone love is free we do not belong to each other we belong to god and god will let things happen Things will play out in our lives. You will meet certain individuals because there is a reason why that person is there. It's either to mold you, push you, shift you into where you need to be. And it all made sense to me. And why do we meet certain people at certain times? A reason for a season. There are times we see people from 10 years from now, we have a, really, we, we have a conversation about our past relationship. We talk and we conversate, but and then you feel like it's gone. It's not there anymore. You have to let it go. When you marry the person that you're not supposed to be married to, that contract has to end. It has to end. Stop waiting on someone that's not, wasn't supposed to be in your life in the beginning. I advise everyone, the birth chart is created for a reason. Everyone in their life has a purpose everyone that creates something has a purpose the birth chart is created for a purpose god wanted it here the birth chart tells you and people read get the birth chart read and you will find out why that marriage didn't work Stop making up your own destiny. You cannot do that. Dying is not bad. It's, it's not sad. It's dying without knowing who was supposed to be with and your purpose. That's sad. Dying without really living without, a, without that purpose. There's many stories while we were children that came out later on about our grandparents, our parents, some of them were, I mean, not some, but they're not meant to be for the specific reason why a husband will never step out, out of the marriage. Someone that's meant for you will not ever do that. There is a person that's made just for you. Stop letting the person that's not meant for you to step in just because you feel sorry for them because they're crying and they're on their knees and they're begging. It doesn't work that way. A man or a woman that breaks your heart is not the one for you. I despise this line when a man says she didn't mean anything to me or the woman says it to you to the male partner well he didn't mean anything to me and I'm getting thank you Holy Spirit I'm getting women are with women freely now and there's 
polygamous relationships right now and they are in deep trouble because there's always that one person that steps out and i'm getting someone gave an std to the boyfriend to the girlfriend to the wife the wife has a baby now the baby has aids because it was transmitted to the baby through delivery I'm getting someone hit a pregnancy and found out they had a HIV and now the pregnancy is so far along. They found out through the mom being sick, she has HIV, she's been exposed. I, I, I'm I hearing right now someone's going to jail for that because he knew he had an STD and he wanted to give it to her just because somebody gave it to him. Hurt people, hurt people people but lo and behold you will suffer for what you've done and God is saying you should have left the door closed many of you are losing your mind right now because that's what you put forth for someone else and not only that it's back-to-back -back chaos and drama I chose distance over drama. I don't want to be part of people's mess. Don't call me with your issues and problems. If you want to call to see how I'm doing or how I am, that's different. But people nowadays call you and they just want to throw their garbage out at you. Garbage that should have never entered the home in the first place. Your life, your business should be private. It should not be shared. There's only one person that should be knowing your secrets and your problems. And that's God. There's many of you that have to come forward and apologize to certain individuals. You are being guided to do so. That's going to open a lot of doors for you. Many of you are letting, letting your ego get the best of you. And that's going to hurt you for the rest of your life. I'm getting fake apologies where God is saying, no, don't even try it. Because I know your heart. Your words do not match what your heart is feeling. And God knows everything. You cannot bypass God. You just can't. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling to what is good. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it yet. If you believe you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. The Lord is my shepherd and I lack nothing. I don't lack anything in my life. I am complete. I am happy. I am healthy. I pray. I manifest it. I stand in my power. In the belief. I walk by faith. I do not walk by sight. And I'm hearing healthy eyes, healthy body. Healthy body, healthy eyes. Many of you, you're vision is gone it's terrible even with glasses i'm hearing because you were trying to blind someone you were sending forth a blinding energy for them not to know the truth I'm hearing peace over disrespect. Let go and let God give God your burdens. Again, I'm hearing 
many of you have cursed God's name. God forgives, forgives every sin but that one. And give me a minute, I'm going to look that up. Okay, it is a sin to curse God's name. There's a difference about taking his name in vain and actually cursing his name. With that in mind, the profane use of God's name should be treated like any other sin. Okay? Using God's name as a curse word shows a heart that doesn't have a proper fear of God. But it is unforgivable to curse his name. Ooh, my nose is itching. <laughs> Some say it is unforgivable and some say it's not. The Bible said it is unforgivable. And I'm hearing the scripture in my head. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Not all that calls unto Lord, Lord. And the Lord answers. Many of you are crying with anger and ask and saying, why? Why me? But do you understand you've created this? You've let this person in your life from time to time. You'll call and say you're sorry. Just come back. And where you should have just let it go. You should have let the person go because it's it was not healthy. And I want to stress this out. When someone leaves you and goes to you, they're not coming back with that one demon that they left with. They're going to come back with seven more. Like in the beginning, when I started, they're coming back to destroy you because someone else destroyed them. They try to find you in someone else and they couldn't. They found someone worse than them. While they were trying to destroy you with all the... With all the... the, the abusing spiritual spirituality they were abusing their spiritual gifts to knock you off your feet to knock you down so they could step on you so they can so they couldn't wait to tell everyone i told you so that she's this way i told you look at everything happening to her that's why it's happening to her because she's evil no They couldn't, they, they couldn't wait, but it didn't happen. So people might be saying that, oh, this person has magical powers. They've been, no. If you want to say God has magical powers, absolutely. God is the alpha and the omega, baby. He is more powerful than you. Then you all think that you are the master of your life and you're not. 
because he could take that life away like this. For he created you in your mother's womb. Stop trying to play God. Stop trying to take someone's life. Stop trying to be someone's mother. Stop trying to take somebody out. You're not God. It's happening all over the world. It's befalling your children. The children dying in car accidents every day. People dying every day. Do you honestly think every second of every day and every state and every country, it's because it's time. It's time to pay for the decades of misery, misery that you've been creating. And it's sad, but it's happening in your immediate family. I leave you with this. Ejection is protection. You're going to eventually heal from whomever left you, whomever tried to destroy your life. You're still breathing. You still wake up every day. Then you have a chance. Just because you have a disease, just because you lost a child, just because you can't carry a child, life is not over. You still have a chance. If you get up every day and you're breathing, you still have a chance. You're still worthy. Believe you are worthy. Speak of worthiness and you shall reap it. Everything you sow, you reap. Stop blaming everybody else. Stop saying it's your fault. I'm hearing someone saying it. it's his or her fault. I'm hearing fault. It's the other person's fault. How? How is it the other person? No one placed a gun to your head and forced you to do anything that you didn't allow or invite into your life. You did it. Because you don't know how to stay by yourself. Because you think loneliness, well, it's not even, sorry, it's not even loneliness. You're not even lonely, which a lot, many of you need to do your inner work. You will find out that living alone is not bad. When you start loving yourself, you'll actually love the company that you're in yourself, with yourself. You're not alone. Aren't you someone? I'm not lonely. Aren't I someone? I enjoy my own company. And I'm not alone. I have God with me. I have all my spirit guides, angels. They surround me daily. You're not alone. God gives us gifts that are in our presence. You will be okay. I know you will be okay. Many of you had said, you're strong. You can make it. When I didn't have anywhere to go and live, you said to me, you're strong. You'll find a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. You said that to me when I told you I didn't have anywhere to go. And you're right. I listened to you. Even though many of you did not open your doors to me, and it's okay. I'm glad you didn't because I'm here today. And I called on God. I didn't call on anyone else. I called on God when I was in despair. And he answered at the drop of a dime because he was right there just waiting for me to say, where are you, God? I'm here. I need you. I'll never forget that day in Burlington. 
he answered me in 5.5 seconds. And people were calling me that I was guided to hear what I needed to hear from that certain individual. There's things that was placed in my life that God was saying, it's okay. This is how I'm going to send you messages. This is where it begins. I'm guiding you. I love you all. And I want you all to take heed of this message. Rejection is protection. When God closes the door, leave it closed. Do not reopen it. If you look back, you will be causing yourself great damage that cannot be undone. And it's going to follow you for the rest of your life. I love you all. Thank you for visiting Guided by God. I'm Divine Diva. I'll see you next time.